Uh, oh gosh, I'll, I'll take on this. Hello and good evening to anyone, if anyone is here. I do apologize, we have come live at 85, not 8 o'clock. Um, I have two wonderful guests here in the room. I have the lovely Finn, who will say hello now. Hello, my dear, how are you? And the lovely David. Hi, guys. There you go. So there are two guests in the house this evening, and none of them are men, but we do have Finn. So there we go. We say hello to Mother Duck and Nicole and Tina Del Silva, Paulie and Heidi and Sharon and Busted and Paul Leslie and Rexan and Nicole and Louise Lewis and Angie Lawrence and Tina Del Silva, who says hi Finbar and hi David. Oh, we need um, David to turn off his device because okay. he's making a nasty noise in the background. We don't like nasty noises, do we? The viewers no so hello to catherine and all the others so hello there's lots of you coming in and jj and richard and paulie and da -da 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 so um yes we hope you've had a wonderful day now today has been a day that's all been about the inquest into the matter of a lady called nicola bully now, Miss Bully, Mrs. Bully, died tragically in the River Wire in Lancashire. Of course, I grew up on the banks of the River Wire, my very self. And it was in a place close to a town called Garstang and Preston. And it's very near where Finn also went to school in the north of England. Um, it is a place that is very beautiful. And it is very tragic what happened to this poor lady, Nicola Bully. Now, friends of mine have all sorts of theories about Nicola Bully's death, but it seems that Lancashire police conducted an appalling investigation and did not do their job properly because they leaked information that was very damaging about Mrs. Bully. And, you know how she had alcoholism problems and the menopause and all the rest of it, and they should not have done such. Now, plenty of people contact me on a daily basis about this particular case because they know that I have a local connection. I haven't lived there in over 20 years, so I don't really have that much of a connection all in my particular view but I do say the handling of this story was appalling and things about this story don't add up you know people write to me about British aerospace they write to me about things to do with canals and other people who've fallen in and you know what why didn't the dog rescue her and why didn't why did she leave her mobile phone on the bench and all the rest of it you know it's a little bit like another story which i also experienced the story of the staircase murder now many of you will know about the staircase murder because netflix made a program about the staircase murder and I spoke at a crime conference two years ago with the lawyer for the staircase murderer, as he became known, um, a famous writer who allegedly murdered his wife. But he tried to blame it on the owl that he claims flew in and knocked his wife down the stairs. Could you make up a more ridiculous story? Perhaps not. But, you know, the staircase murderer, as he became known, had also had a previous wife 
who fell down the stairs in Germany when he lived there. So what a curious situation this was. Um, so I have to say the case of Nicola Bully reminds me of the staircase of murderer. And I went to listen to the proponent of the staircase of murderer being Mr. Innocent after the Netflix program that had been made um, at the crime conference. And um, anyway, I think we will get some noise shortly, unfortunately, because uh, Finn has decided to go upstairs. Unfortunately, when people go upstairs, they generally go to the bathroom and there will be some noise. Please don't think it is the staircase murderer in action. No. Um, this could be the problem. But no, in this house where I live, whenever someone... And we've got another one here. Uh, here we go. We've got two of them making noise. I'm terribly sorry. Um, this is a terrible thing. This is what happens in this house when people use pipes. Um, I do apologize. I cannot stop the noise. Now we've got another one opening a fridge making noise. Um, they want to make noise. Um, oh dear. I do apologize. This is going to be a bit of a comedy episode. Um, David perhaps could go upstairs and tell him to turn off the pipes. But David is going to reopen the fridge and make more noise, which is not a very good idea. Leave the fridge alone. You want to do? No, it's, um, I'm perfectly okay, but please go and tell him to not make more noise for the moment. Yes, well, no more noise. That is okay. Anyway, David has a gin and tonic, which is very important. David deserves a gin and tonic because he's a very good person. Um, Finn makes lots of noise without... Uh, Even though... Yes, you, you were not meant to make noise, Finn, but we like Finn. Um, I do apologize to you all for the noise, but we're not like the professionals, like the, the person who makes the videos about criminals. Um, we are amateurs. But that is why you probably like us, because we actually have a bit of fun, even though we do make a bit of noise in the background that might be a bit irritating, quite frankly, to me, more than anyone else. Anyway, so there we go. So Nicola Bully, going back to her, there have been lots of conspiracy theories to do with her and um, British aerospace systems, who, of course, are based in near the, near the River Wire, in um, the Livam St. Anne's Blackpool area. Um, you know, the police have said, what would we do differently? And they've asked the family of Nicola Bully about that. And, you know, should the area have been cordoned off properly? What about this man called Peter Folding who um, went there being a busybody? The police are trying to say they've never encouraged this man to do anything. Was he right? Was he wrong? You know, I don't know enough about this story, but I can tell you the River Wire is a tidal river. I grew up living next to the River Wire in Lancashire. I can tell you there is something not quite right about this story. You know, this woman's dog, if you had a dog, a spaniel, a loyal dog, and you fell into the river, you're saying this dog didn't go into the river and try and rescue you. That's ridiculous. This dog would have gone in there and gone out after her. This dog would have made a fuss. You know, her mobile phone was on a Zoom call on the bench. And nobody bothered to question this, you know. They found her mobile phone still on, on a phone call. And she's dead in the river. And they don't find her body for days. Something here 
does not make sense. If it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. In this case, it's not good. It's bad. And this lady and her husband or partner, whoever he was, something does not quite make sense. I am not a believer in all the conspiracy theories. Whatever happened is odd, I will say that. But something doesn't make sense about a woman falling in the river on her own dog. Dogs are loyal, wonderful creatures. And if you fell in the river, your dog would come and make a fuss and try and help you. And nobody found her body. And this man, Mr. Folding, Peter Folding, the busybody who went diving, he couldn't find anything. And this is a tidal river, so things sweep in and then they sweep out. None of this makes any sense. Now, I am not a believer in the conspiracy theories that are many people are coming out with, but I will say something here doesn't quite make sense. That is all I shall say. So Nicola Bully, I hope this poor lady who did die in the river wire, I hope justice is done and whatever happened, I hope it is resolved. I hope that this poor lady, you know, who had children, I hope justice is done for her. I can't say any more than that because I didn't know her, but I will say none of this makes sense. But I do not say I believe the crazy crackpot conspiracies. So anyway, tomorrow we're having the autumn statement. We're going to have the living wage extended, allegedly. This is a sign of desperation on the part of Rishi Sunak. Mr. Rishi Sunak is married to a billionaireess. Mr. Rishi Sunak knows his time is up. Mr. Rishi Sunak is an absolute prat. Mr. Rishi Sunak is a failed prime minister, and he's the failed sidekick of Boris Johnson. He, what has he achieved in recent weeks? He has made David Cameron, the man who brought us Brexit, a lord. Lordy lord, how ludicrous. This is an absolute disgrace. The last time I met David Cameron was at a party at Christie's in 2018. I was standing next to Michael Heseltine, Michael Heseltine, and um, he and I, he said, oh, it's, how are you? Oh. And I said, um, you know, you're a disgrace. You brought us this mess that we have now found our country in. Shame on you, David Cameron. I wouldn't spit on you, David Cameron, if you were on fire. And the fact that you have been made a lord is an absolute abhorrent travesty. This country deserves better from our politicians. David Cameron, Lord Cameron of um, Chipping Camden or whatever you, Chipping Norton or whatever you call yourself, you are not someone I have an ounce of respect for. You are shaming our nation with your behaviour. Anyway, this is an absolute mess that we've got ourselves into as a result of a Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak, the man. You are Prime Minister. You have a political party with a rather large majority for now, but it's rapidly declining by the week. But you cannot, amongst your own MPs, find someone suitable to be Foreign Secretary. You bring in a man who isn't even an MP. So the Foreign Secretary cannot be questioned in the House of Commons. 
This is an absolute disgrace. You are an anti-democrat, Rishi Sunak. You are an appalling stain on our politics. You have destroyed the once great Conservative Party by your behaviour, bringing in a foreign secretary who cannot even be questioned in the House of Commons. That is an outrage. It is a travesty to democracy, and I think you should be ashamed of yourself. But you don't care, Rishi Sunak, do you, Rishi? Because you're dishy Rishi, and you're off to your new home in California with your billionaire's wife, and you don't give a flying fuck about the rest of the people of Britain. You are a self-centered piece of toe rag, and you're a shameful disgrace. You are the worst prime minister in British history. I wanted to give you a chance, but you have betrayed everything about democracy because all you care about is yourself and your billionaire's wife. You are rotten to your core. You are wrong. You are rotten and you are unreliable. You are somebody who should be... Uh, you should be ashamed of yourself, but of course you won't be because you're off to make another billion and that's all you bloody well care about. You are a bad, bad person. Sorry, um, I have noise in the background, but um, the person in the background is laughing because he thinks this is funny. I don't think it's funny. I think it's disgraceful and it's wrong. Rishi Sunak, you are rotten. And you are wrong. You have just you have betrayed conservatism. Real conservatives like myself, we do not support you. The Conservative Party, the once great Conservative Party, has been ruined. And you know, I was with some Indian people the other day who were friends of mine, who are friends of mine. And they wanted to celebrate, they wanted to celebrate. You know, having an uh, having an Indian as leader of Britain, and now they feel embarrassed. And now I'm sat with another Indian gentleman. I don't know what he feels, but what do you feel about Rishi Sunak? He needs to go. He needs to go. So he's another Indian. See, Indian people even, you know, they were initially proud that I'm not proud that this man became the leader. Stupid, stupid laws. And now um, David here says he makes stupid laws. My friend equally feels the same, but his parents, you know, because they came from the same community at the beginning, were celebrating him, even though they were Labour supporters. They were Indian Labour supporters, but they were proud because they said this brought something good to the Indian community. But now this man brings nothing but bad. Rishi Sunak is a shameless piece of toe rag and his greedy grabbing wife, you know, all those people have done is feather their own nests. Shame on them. Shame on them. How do you feel about that, David? Huh? How do you feel about Rishi Sunak and his wife profiteering? I have mixed, mixed opinions. Ah, Max McCoy. Wife money. Ah, here's Max. He's uh, saying, who is laughing? Um, what do you think about Rishi Sunak's wife, David? Uh, she's a billionaire. But what do you feel about her? Technically, she's not a billionaire. Her father is a billionaire. But what do you she feel about their behavior towards Britain? Britain? Oh, uh, to be honest, I don't know much. Like, don't know much of the background, so you don't you you don't. Uh, I know the wife is having a what? Uh, she's an American citizen. No, but you're not answering my question. Yeah. What do you feel about their behaviour? Is it acceptable or is it not? Uh, for Rishi Sunak, no. The wife, I don't know. So he I, doesn't I, I, mind I, the I wife. I comment on some things which I don't know. So there we go. So um. Max Max says Rishi is Boris's sidekick. 
Um, I would say Rishi is and Boris are at war, but there we go. But the pair of them are a pair of rotten toe rags. So that is how I feel about them. Anyway, we shall move along to another topic. And that is another of these nasty people, James Dyson. Now, Mr. Dyson, or Lord Dyson, or whatever he's called, Sir James, sorry, he is Sir James Dyson. He is not Lord Dyson. I over-elevate. Um, Alexis is here as well, the lovely Alexis Parr. You remember Alexis? Yes. Yeah. Alexis, um, Finn and David say hello to Alexis and also to the lovely... Um, the lovely, um, what's his name? Uh, da, 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 the rest of you. Anyway, so here we are. So James Dyson has arrived at the High Court. And he is getting distressed about the personal attacks upon himself over himself being the most nasty of the Brexiteers, you know, this is a man who has profited out of Britain. And him and his wife, Deirdre, or Deirdre, as I call her, the woman who sells horrible carpets on the um, King's Road, dreadful carpet store, ugly carpets, um, you know, ultimate billionaires who champion vote leave and then move to Singapore. Um, good for them. They they basically treat us like we're all stupid. And anyway, they're suing the mirror, and, well, good for them. But, you know, good friends of Boris Johnson, Prince Andrew, uh, da, 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 you know, there we go. So the vacuum cleaner tycoon moves his office to Singapore. But, you know, that is just how it works for these Brexiteers. Brexiteers have no respect for Britain. And then we get David Cameron back. It's hardly a fair deal, is it? You know, vacuum cleaner bogs off, we get David Cameron back. Him and his, that is not a fair deal for Britain. That is a very bad deal. Do we want either, we don't want either of them. Anyway, Dyson is suing the mirror, and he claims it's causing him all sorts of distress. Well, the violins play for the billionaire James Dyson and his wife Deirdre, or Dreirdre, as I call her, and his silly children. And um, honestly, um, let's see what happens. But I hope that the mirror wins the case. Um, he doesn't like being called a cheat. He doesn't like this. He doesn't like the other. Um, well, Sir James Dyson, um, perhaps you could have paid tax in Britain and stayed in Britain and supported the country you supposedly so loved, Sir James, because frankly, you know, I don't think you're a great proponent of British industry. Um, I remember, you know, spending time with you and your wife and your children um, meeting you. And frankly, you went on and on about how proud you were of being British. But you soon bogged off to Singapore, didn't you? So um, I don't blame the mirror for having a pop at you. Let's be honest. Anyway, let's see what happens. But, you know, you're, you're tying yourself to the coattails of Boris Johnson and Prince Andrew. Not really a pair of people anyone would be proud to be linked to if they had any brain. So anyway, good luck to Sir James Dyson if that is where he thinks his destiny lies. But I think he may have nailed his coattails to the wrong mast. Let's be honest, not a good idea. Anyway. The next topic on the list is Oscar Pistorius. Now, this little rat, 
who dared to sh the lovely Reva Steenkamp, whose parents I have briefly met. He murdered and massacred this lovely lady, shot her through the bathroom door and killed her in cold blood. And he is trying to get parole for his evil crime. He should not be given parole. And on Friday this week, he will be going before a parole board. And, you know, he's a, he was a brilliant athlete, without a doubt. You know, he could have led a wonderful life, but instead he chose to be violent and wicked. And this man has shown no remorse. He cries only tears for himself. Whereas this beautiful lady who could have had a wonderful life, Reva Steenkamp, um, you know, he shot her dead through the bathroom door, killing her in a, a, in a shocking evil crime that, that shocked the world. And then, you know, he is a double amputee. He was a brilliant athlete, but he is a wicked, evil man. And he has shown no remorse for what he did to that poor, poor family. And he will turn 37 years old on Wednesday. You know, I'm 42 years old. He's younger than me. He's been in prison since 2014. But it's time that he accepted that he is not somebody who did this by mistake. He never wants to admit the error of his ways. Until he admits the error of his ways, the Steenkamp family will never, ever forgive him. I don't know if they could ever forgive him, ever, because their beautiful daughter died. You know, they did not get to have grandchildren as a result of her death. It is a terrible, terrible thing. And this man, Mouse, perhaps is what you could call him, he is a coward. He cries, he throws up in court, he does every little trick to make himself out. I mean, poor old him, you know, he's a double amputee, you know, da 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 da, da. But they let him out too early, and then they took him back. And now they're going to let him out again. He has to be let out ultimately. I don't disagree with that. But the family deserve to have justice. You know, he killed her on Valentine's Day 2013. He shot her repeatedly through a bathroom door. He massacred this poor woman who did nothing wrong. He is a wicked, crazy lunatic. Okay, he had his problems in his life and he had his achievements at the Olympics and he did great things, but that does not make him above the law. The man is no hero. And it is time that the family were considered. Think of the victim. In all of crime, I always say this. Everyone remembers the killer. We talk about the Jeremy Bamba murders. We don't think of, you know, the people who died. We think of, um, you know, the, the... the Myra Hindley killings. We don't think of all the people Myra Hindley killed. It is always the killer who is remembered. Remember the victim. In this case, poor old Reva Steenkamp, a lady taken in her prime, a lady who could have contributed to the world with a beautiful smile. And I will show the picture to my guests. That is the lady who who was massacred by this evil man. 
do you not think that this is a person who should have led a wonderful life and not had it taken away from her? That is how I think people should remember all crime cases. It is always the victim who should be remembered. It is Jamie Bulger who should be remembered, not John Venables, the killer. Not the Moors murderers, but their victims. Always remember the victim. So I say cheers to the memory of Ariva Steenkamp. So we shall move along to yet another topic. And that topic is the TikTok menace. Now, David here likes playing on computers. He's quite into computers and little devices and telephones. I don't know if he's into TikTok, but... Yeah, it was. He, still there. He is still here, but I don't yeah, know... I'm still using TikTok. Ah, but does David... I'm going to ask David if David knows a person called Mizzy. Perhaps you could look up on your TikTok, Mizzy. Mizzy is a menace. So a judge has told TikTok menace, Mizzy, your pranks are not funny. This is the tearaway 19-year-old has been locked up for 18 weeks. Jolly well, about time. He's been put in a younger... Oh, yeah, I've seen this videos. Yeah. Yes, a young offender institution. So, David, yeah. may I ask you a couple of questions? Yeah. So, we're going to have a bit of a discussion here right yeah. now. We're going to do a. I, unfortunately, we can't do um, shared screen because we're sitting on the opposite side of the room. But um, I'm going to ask David about what he thinks of Mizzy's antics. Do you think that this TikTok is a force for good? It could be a force of good. Uh, it is like a sword, double sword, good, good and the bad. But the. But, but do you the, think that somebody caught like this character Mizzy, yeah, is should be allowed to have a platform to do this, or do you think that this um, is something dangerous yeah. to the world? I think it should be a bit more moderated, like in the sense, like they need to have TikTok needs to have better algorithm, like to. We love the stupid videos. Like he's taking pranks to next level where it's not even pranks. If you know what I mean. So he, he's nineteen year old. He's nine year, nineteen years old, and he's being stupid. That and how old are you? I'm twenty nine. He's twenty nine. So he's ten years um, younger yeah, than, than, than 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 David, and he's called really Bakari Bronze Ogaro. Where on earth you get a name like that, God only knows. Anyway, he's been ordered by Thames Magistrate Court not to upload directly or indirectly any original video content or social media content without prior documented consent of the people in that content. And now he has breached that, of course, so he has been given 18 weeks at a young offenders institution. So he will serve probably nine weeks. Now... David, as somebody who uses this, yeah. how do you feel this this medium should be used appropriately? Uh, it can be used for entertainment. Like, okay, in a light scale, if the prank doesn't harm anybody, that's fine. I'm totally with that. But that boy is doing a bit too much. There we go. Well, a bit too much for my liking. I don't know. Some people might agree with that. Some people might not agree with that. I'm hoping Everybody you can. Their choices and I'm hoping you can all hear this, but David is saying he hopes he thinks he's using it too much, and I totally agree. Now, Finn, uh, Finn does not use social media. Finn is an artist, and Finn um, communicates with a Nokia phone device. What do you think about someone going on social media and right make, making videos attacking people, Finn? Uh, he, Finn thinks they should get a life. <laughs> I think Finn has quite the relevant point. I quite totally agree. Max says hello, David. Hello, Max. Hello, Max says David. Um, anyway, 
So um, there we go. We are getting a variety of opinions on this particular topic. Tina De Silva says, I miss the good old Nokias. Um, TikTok is about being appropriate. It's not about being appropriate, says Ali Mitchell. I agree with Finn. Catherine says, I like Finn. Nicole oh. says, I like the snake game, which is obviously the game which is played on the, the Nokia device. And here we go. We're fitness. So TikTok in China, according to Simon, is science. Tech and self-improvement videos are limited to 45 minutes per day. In the West, however, Nicole says, I like you more, though, Matthew. Mm. And Paulie says, he's a smeghead. Well, I don't know what that means. TikTok can talk off, says Busted. Anyway, there we go. But um, no, this individual um, brat... Bakari Bronze Ogaro, also known as Mizzy. I think that it is jolly well time that this little prankster were put back in his box. He has caused a menace. He has gone around destroying supermarkets, libraries, attacking people. He is a nasty little piece of rubbish. And his mother and father should be ashamed of themselves for not keeping this child under control. He's a 19-year-old. You know, where is mother and where is father? Shame on them. It's jolly well time, as Max says, tick-tock, it's nine o'clock, time for a gin. Well, Max, if you'd like to come round, you're welcome to come have a gin with us. There's yeah. plenty of gin waiting for you. So come along, Max. You are welcome to come round the corner. You only live up the road. So hello, Max. Anyway, this little tow rag, according to District Judge Bone, well, that's a great name for a judge, Judge Bone. She's like a dog with a bone, or he's like a dog with a bone, um, said, I will not be tolerating his um, posting videos on social media for the next two years. I'm satisfied that the criminal behavior that you were subjected to should be strengthened. Your allure to fame is clear, meaning you need further help so as not to reoffend. Therefore, for two years starting from today, you must not publish or share or attempt to publish or share any video footage. You must not act with anyone else to publish or share or attempt to publish or share any video footage and you must not contribute to any social media account other than your own. You must not trespass on any other private property or enter the E20 postcode area of London unless travelling on public transport for prearranged child arrangements, i.e. this little brat needs to be locked up and throw away the key. This horrible child has invaded people's homes has smashed people in the face, has violently broken up books in libraries, has sniggered and snide behaviour of the absolute piece of junk. Um, no, he deserves to be sent to the Bibby Stockholm. Throw him on the Bibby Stockholm and throw away the key. <laughs> We don't want this horrible brat anywhere near anyone civilized on our planet because he has upset old people, young people, you know, people in libraries. It's disgusting. You know, uh, he tried to say in mitigation, I'm currently studying at Haringey's Sixth Form College. Well, if you'd focused on your studies at Haringey Sixth Form College, you might have done a bit better in life, but instead you went around terrorising innocent people. He's recently gained employment as a waiter at a restaurant in Islington. Well, I wouldn't want to go to any restaurant where he was serving me, or he might serve up his trouble. The man is completely a mess. In terms of his family relationships, his relationship with his mother is both good and bad. He claims, according to his 
solicitor. He has not had any contact with his father since he was two years old. Well, his father made the right choice. He has two sisters who he has good relationships. One sister is in court today. Well, the other one didn't show up, did she? So she doesn't have a good relationship. He has a one-year-old son. Oh, my God. Poor, poor child. That could be a disaster area. He has access to once a week, every week. His relationship with the mother of the child is difficult. Do we see a pattern developing here with this monstrous brat? But he still attempts to have as much child time with his child as he can. Well, if he really cared about his child, why was he going around smashing up shops? Why was he going around being a complete menace to society? This clear factor in mitigation is his age and his immaturity, according to his lawyer. No, we don't believe you. You are a liar and you're a fraudster and you are a disgrace and your behavior attacking people, Ogaro, which is your real name, um, Mizzy, I'm an adult and you went on the program talk tv and said you had a right to do what you can you spoke to pierce morgan you said i'm an adult i can do what i want and i will do what i want i don't need to offer a sincere apology i don't need any remorse so you're the father of a child we now find out you're a moron you're worse than the village idiot you were born in the village barn, and you should bog off. Get on the baby Stockholm and bog off, you piece of junk. We don't like you. So there we go. Anyway, I don't know where we're up to on our programme, but we're now up to 42 minutes. I think it may be time for a quiz. I think we need something a bit more light-hearted after all of this. Um... I do apologise that we've talked about such a person for so long, but he is not a piece of S-H-I-T. But um, I will not apologise for attacking somebody who treats people like that. He is a scumbag. Anyway, it is time for a quiz. So um, I don't know who's going to help me with this quiz. Oh, Harriet is ready to help with the quiz. Um, the problem with this quiz, this quiz book is a problem because you have to go backwards. Um, how are we going to do this quiz? Let's have a think. Uh, no, Nicole, the answer is not Silver Black. We haven't even asked, um, asked the question yet. Right, so I have to choose a random page. Or would David like to do the quiz? Uh, what? Well, want me to do the quiz? Um, no, perhaps not, then. He doesn't want to do the quiz. No. Then Harriet was there. Harriet is willing to do the quiz. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right, we'll begin with question number one. What is Queen Elizabeth II's the late now Queen Elizabeth II's surname. Well, I know the answer, obviously. The winner is Simon Coates with a Windsor, of course. That's pretty obvious and easy. And I'm putting a cross on the page so we don't repeat the page on a future occasion. Oh, this book is quite current, given Andrew Marr, Emily Maitlis, and John Sopel all left the BBC to join a witch radio station. It's not talk TV, David. And it's not good old Simon Max, but good old Simon and Max. Uh, you can come around and have a gin if you'd like. It wasn't the news agents, but that's a good program. We like the news agents, very jo jolly thing. 
Um, it's not Radio 5 Live and it's not Talk Radio. It's not GHB, which I think you mean GB Radio or whatever, GB News, which is a load of old trash. It's not Radio Caroline. No, that's... Um, They're moaning that I have my book on the mic. It's a bit muffled. I can assure you the book is nowhere near the microphone. No. So, um, Paulie gets the point. Oh, sorry, Hey Tigers gets the point with LBC. There we go. Right. Butterhead, Batvia. And winter density are all types of which vegetable? And no, it's not Philip Schofield. The answer is lettuce. And Simon Coates is the first to say lettuce. I have a wonderful friend called Lettuce. She was on Britain's Got Talent. Look her up, but her name is spelled L-E-T-T-I-C-E. And she has exceptional talent. So I urge you to listen out for Lettuce a Row Boffin, or as she calls herself, Lettuce Row Boat Ham. And Simon Cow and... Um, David Williams, absolutely a daughter, an absolutely wonderful person. So, the next question. The potentially fatal affliction of decompression sickness, a risk to scuba divers, is more commonly known by what name? I believe Sam Coates has got the answer, but I have yet to check. It's not called a Liz Truss. No. Simon Coates wins the point with the bends. Simon Coates is very quick off the mark. Question five. Which Japanese car manufacturer, manufacturer makes the jazz? I already know the answer to this, but we'll see what you have to say. Japanese car manufacturer the jazz it's not toyota no no it's not hyundai because that's not japanese um the winner is again simon coates with honda it's a very easy question i can't believe how many of you are getting it wrong so many of you are weak links on this particular question clearly you should do more reading on car manufacturers. Whose Twitter, well, we now need to call it X, I suppose, handle is at Pontifex. I don't know whether it's current or not, but at Pontifex. It is not Simon Simon or Apple or Philip Schofield. Um, it is not Pope Francis. So you are getting close. Nicole gets the point with the Pope. It was not Pope Francis. It is the Pope. It is a handle used by the Pope. So we can't accept Claudia, Pope Francis. Sorry. In geometry, question seven, how many minutes are there in a degree? And it is not a Karen Brady. No. And it's not Jesus. And it's not popes are all the same or 60. Oh, it is 60. Sorry. Carl Jones gets the point with 60. Carl Jones wins the point. 60. Question eight. The national rugby team of which country are known as the Springbok? Now, this is a very easy question. Even I, as a non-sports player, would be able to answer this one. The Springboks. Very easy. Bobby gets the point with South Africa. Thank you, Bobby. Bobby is the winner. 
Question nine. Davy Jones fronted which pop group that was manufactured in 1965 by television producers? Montecute gets the point with the monkeys. The monkeys. So there we go. Thank you to that person for that answer. And your halfway house, which recurring sound heard in the heart through a stethoscope is usually a sign of a disease or damage? It's not a beat. It's not a heartbeat. It's not a beat. It's not a beat. It's not a rumble. It's not a stutter. But it is a murmur. And Busted gets the point with Mama. Busted is the winner of the point. Question 11. Bernard Montgomery and Frank Spencer became known for wearing which type of soft, flat-crowned French hat? Simon Coates gets the point with Beret. Question 12. Focaccia, pita, and brioche are all types of what? Montecute gets the point with bread. Montecute is the winner. Montecute seems to be doing rather well. A new um, achiever. Errol Brown was the lead singer with which group? Named after a drink. It wasn't a pastry, but Simon Coates gets the point with hot chocolate. Hot chocolate is the name of the group, of course. A very famous group. South Park is set in which American state? Montecute gets it yet again. Colorado. Montecute, you are the fastest finger first. You're very quick off the mark. You are the strongest link. The rest of you are very weak on this, these particular questions. Question 15. Devil's Bones is a slang term for what piece of gaming equipment? Montecute gets it yet again with dice. Montecute, you either have this quiz book or you're very bright. And you know the page. We haven't given away the page. Amarillo is the Spanish word for which colour? The winner is, yet again, Montecute with yellow. Montecute is clearly uh, either a very, very quick person or really is very, very, very wise. Wouldn't you agree, David? Yeah. He seems to get every question before everybody else. Oh. Mm. Right. Right, let's see if Mon if um, Montecute can get this one. The logo of which film studio is a winged horse? Nicole is hungry. It's not Pegasus, it's not Universal, but Chile... Chili Kareen wins with a Tristar. Tri Chili Kareen is the winner of the point. Montecute got it wrong with DreamWorks. So on this occasion, Montecute was wrong. So anyway, question 17. The logo of which, uh, sorry, the in, sorry, in which, the 18, in which modern day county 
country was Marie Curie born? Oh, David, uh, uh, quiet. Finn. Finn, quiet. Not me. I'm clean. Uh, Montecute wins with Poland. Poland. And Max, um, we have a scorekeeper from a distance, but we would have welcomed you to come and kept score with a gin and tonic, but you didn't turn up. Right, question 19, your penultimate question. Um, which London underground mine has the most stations? An easy question. It's not King's Cross, that's not a line. And it's not the Victoria line, and it's not the Piccadilly line, it's not the circular line. No, none of you have got it yet. Montecute, you are wrong. It's Nicole, you are wrong, it's not the Northern line. The winner is Rex Ann. Rexan, not Roxanne, Rexan with the district line. 60 stations are on the district line. I didn't know that myself. There we are. You can go 60 stations on the district line. Montecute says, I've learned something. So did I. Didn't we all? And your final question for the evening is snooker players. Neil Robertson and Eddie Charlton come from which country? Answers, please. Not Wales, not Scotland, not Ireland. Mary T wins with Australia. Mary T. So have we a winner on the doors? Debbie McGee, as we know you're... A tiebreaker for Simon and Montecute. Right, we have to choose another question from a random page. So here we go. And our question will be, Iron Horse is an archaic literary term for what mode of transport? And I have to have the correct answer. Uh, it's it it is related to railways, but um, I need the correct answer. Montecute probably gets it with steam train. It is steam a locomotive, so. Montecute is the winner, I would say. I, would, I can accept steam train because steam locomotive is a steam train. Um, so thank you very much to you all. Um, it's a goodbye from Matthew, says Max McConnell, and a goodbye from me. Well, uh, we love the wonderful Max, and we hope he will come around and join us soon. So, um, he's obviously not coming for gin and tonic this evening. But anyway, thank you very much to you all for your participation, your enthusiasm, and um, absolutely delightful joining in. It's been a wonderful evening, and, and Finn has enjoyed being here. Fiona says, sorry, she was late. Well, we'll, well, we don't accept excuses, Fiona. Naughty, naughty. But we like you very much. All of you, you've all been wonderful. And thank you very much for your chat, enthusiasm, and enjoyment. And we hope to see you all again very soon. We've done 59 minutes of chitter chatter and conversation with our quiz book and other things. Um, and we hope to see you again tomorrow evening. Um, thank you very much to you all. Have a wonderful evening. Good night and good gardening to you all. And as 
the late great Jill Dando would say, don't have nightmares. Take care and good night. Thank you very much and goodbye. Take care.